Have you ever heard of a Mekon? To be honest, before my trip to Yakutia, I had never heard such a name. However, the place is the coldest point on our planet. Think of it. The coldest point on Earth. In the whole world. <laughs> this wonder of the world is located over here, a thousand kilometers away from Yakutsk. Shall I take a once-in-a-lifetime chance and visit it? Mm, what do you think? A tour to Aimekon can cost 1,000, 1,000 and a half, and even 3,000 dollars. Now I'm about to jump into the coldest project of my life. I want to go to Aimekon. Waiting for a driver. It's a 15 hour drive with a little luck. I have a long way to go, a quite dangerous way indeed. A thousand kilometers in minus 50 is no laughing matter. I kept my mind over the thousands about what I would do if we broke down on the way, with no communication for most over the route. And so began this difficult damn trip. At the start, I was very optimistic anyway. However, my joy quickly faded when I realized that it was not worth building up hopes to get there in the promised 15 hours. At first, we spent two hours picking up hitchhikers, throwing boxes with cargo on the roof of the van, and only after these long lasting procedures, we drove out of town on the ice road frozen at minus 40 on the Lena River. We drove miles, miles and miles. All the way, I amused myself by looking out of my window into the dark. See the view? Isn't it cool? We also drove in the car at dawn and halfway through the daylight hours until we stopped at the last, thank god, cafe on the way called Cuba. Ironically, a cafe located in the coldest place on the planet was named Cuba. Good morning. It's cold. Very cold. In general, my mood was noticeably lowered. Despite the views from the window, which I finally had a chance to gaze at. After a 20 hour trip, I just wanted to get into bed and have a sleep. A very long sleep. On the way, we dropped a few people off at the weather station, a cabin with nothing but mountains, trees, and snow around for many tens of kilometers. The Oymakan locals call them hermits. It's not an easy job, indeed. That's it. Arrived. Finally. Dear me. Minus 51 Celsius. But the way was bad from the beginning and continued to test my temper. We drove. 22 hours in total. I was so tired when I arrived, but I immediately started to take pictures. Started fly. And it was a very bad decision. Why so? I mean, we took off, everything was fine, but two minutes later I observed strange things. At first, the camera began to shake from the cold, and a few seconds later, drone went crazy, turning into a real rabbit fly. All of its sensors iced up, and it shot many, many meters upwards, no longer obeying the remote control. After several takeoffs and vertical dives, with my hands shaking from cold and stress, I was still able to land the little bastard. So, the bird's eye view of Omicron was only partially captured. 
However, the village didn't look strange or unusual. Big and small houses, smoke from wood stoves, chimneys. Except that there was not a soul on the streets. And why is that, I wonder? The day seemed to be wholly bad. But what a pleasure it was to return to the warm and cozy hotel after a shooting day. By the way, the hotel is really a 5-star one by local standards. Because of the availability of hot water, showers and toilets inside. Say nothing of the really stylish interior. It's very surprising that people come here from all over the world. Just look at this guest book. In addition to Russians and Yakuts, I found comments from Chinese, French, New Zealanders and many, many others. I took the effort and left my review as well. Yeah. So I was fortunate in staying such a hotel. Considering that in this village many houses do not even have heating and most have a toilet outside in the yard. In minus 60. Here is what the local guy told me about his house. А так пока местное отопление. Ну, у меня вот буквально через пару месяцев, если успею, унитаз дома будет, умывальник. А так стирально машина есть у меня. But the locals are used to it living this way since childhood and see nothing surprising in it. By the way, I met quite a few dogs here, unlike in Yakutsk. I was told that monglers stay warm here, unlike purebred dogs. Look how cheerful they are. By the way, they are very friendly, and they were all trying to play with me. In Amicon, one can see perhaps a miracle of nature. Never freezing streams which stay unfrozen even in the lowest temperatures of minus 60. I decided to check the water temperature. Ah, uh, minus 50. It was icy. However, in Holy Baptism, January 19, some people immerse into the waters here. Despite the minus 50, they dive into the water. Well, that's certainly very cool, there is nothing more to say. But still, most locals just take water from the stream. They believe it is holy on this day. They insisted that such water doesn't go bad for the whole year until the next baptism. And if you take water on any other day, it will go bad very quickly. And if I could take a bottle of water on the plane, I would check it out, honestly. But I always buy no baggage tickets. Tamtor, the village where I stayed, had several other noteworthy places. This is a local regular airport, which departs occasional flights to Yakutsk, they say. An abandoned, as far as I understood, weather station and a memorial installation in honor of the lowest temperature recorded here back in the last century. Additionally, the local school has a Gulag museum, which has assembled an impressive collection about the prisoners of the camps and exhibits some things that once belonged to these people. Instruments, some clothes, and even poems with drawings. It has amazingly not discolored in so many years. Here you can see how many Yakut writers and poets were oppressed and sent to build roads, including the Kolyma route along which I came here from Yakutsk. The museum has maps showing the location of all of the camps in the Soviet Union and several photographs of prisoners at work. Also, 
High school students made several models according to the surviving historical materials. Amazing! The stained glass window is also their handiwork. Talented and very polite kids. I visited the school after classes, and every student I met said hello. Also, it was a real act of faith for me to walk to school in minus 50. I didn't regret it at all. There is also a mysterious cave in Tamtor, and no one wanted to tell me anything about it. And when I asked questions, everyone mysteriously answered, go and see for yourself. So be it. And I set off on a short trip. Five minutes by car. But at minus 55, I was physically unable to walk. After 15 minutes on the street, my hands and feet were so cold that I couldn't feel them anymore. My nose and throat were suffering no less. It was impossible to breathe because of the cold. Anyway, after picking up the female guardian of the key on the way, even so, we ended up in a cave. Oh, I mean to say the residence of Chishan, the Lord of Cold. Except he wasn't here himself. Most of the time he spends in a village called Oimikon. Indeed, Oimikon is a small village that is part of the huge Oimikon region, which for simplicity is also called Oimikon. The cave had many ice sculptures, but the main attraction, in my opinion, was the natural one. Just look at these magnificent snowflakes. Except that my camera instantly fogged up and I couldn't bring it back to life on the spot. So my phone came to the rescue. It, surprisingly, felt much better on this trip. The cave is about 150 meters deep, and different snowflakes form on each section of this some kind of a corridor due to slight differences in temperature. Cold Pole is warm. For some reason, the warm place is the residence of the Lord of Cold. Да, держит температуру. There is also an ice bar where you can drink some strong drinks from ice glasses in the summertime. I wonder if Chis Han himself moonlights as a bartender? There is also a relaxation room where you can lie on an ice bed and relax to the strains of national Yakut instruments. Ой, я боюсь, что я не ощущу релакса. А вы попробуйте. Sure enough, but lying on the ice at minus 10 didn't seem like a very good idea, in effect. Despite the reindeer skins carefully placed on beds, I distinctly felt, after a few seconds of relaxation, that the bed was very, well, chilly. <laughs> all in all, it's cool in here far too much. Speaking of the sculptures, the best remembered one is the wind. The author decided to visualize some natural phenomena, and the wind was the first of such sculptures. Now they work on other sculptures. Then I went to the wish-granting area and asked the sacred owl for something very important. Here she is, my bird of good luck. After sitting on Chishan's throne, I went to the heart of the cave, his treasury of the cold. Месяца. 
А в ноябре, в конце ноября месяца Ческан отсюда выпускает холод. Зима начинается с аймекония, зима начинается с текутии. Потом уже до декабря месяца, так и по всему, по всей России, потом по всему миру. И до марта месяца она продолжается, пока все Деда Морозы не передают холод. This cold is guarded by a bear. And, according to Yakut customs, women are forbidden to touch it. So, somehow, I went around this fluffy lounging carcass. Главное не упасть. А то... Ай, 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 ай. I wished for a weather warmer one next year. By the way, the legend about the cold kept here is not really a legend at all. For many years in a row, an annual festival was held in Tamtor, where the true Dead Maros and even Santa came. They hosted a great feast with folk costumes, competitions and reindeer sledding. Now, because of the coronavirus, the festival is discontinued, but I saw the pictures of previous festivals. But where is the residence master Chishan? The next day I went to Aimekon for the personal meeting with him. I wonder why there are so many positive temperature readings in minus 60. If you have snot, no worries. It will freeze the second you get outside. <coughs> I'm like a bull in an arena. It's fun. But it's very cold. In Yakutsk it was minus 40, allowing for a half an hour walk. Here you go out for three minutes and you just want to go home, or to the car, or to the store, to some warm place. <laughs> Back to Aimikon. The road to is fabulously beautiful. Too bad it's very, very uneven. I've never seen such a winter anywhere indeed. Everything is completely white. Mountains, trees, even the Christmas trees are covered with snow from toe to crown. And on the way I even met a few birds making a nest here. And I was puzzled. There is almost no wildlife. Even the common bird surprises as the ace wonder of the world. Snow, frost and sunshine. As I entered the village, I was greeted by another installation showing the temperature and the symbol of Oymekon, a bull. The bull of cold symbolizes the Yakut winter. The legend has it that on January 31, the bull's both horns go blunt at the frost yields. The first horn breaks on February 12, since that day the severe frost yields. The second horn breaks on February 24, when the frosty period in Yakutia ends completely. The winter is over on March 22 when the head of the mythical creature falls off and the bull's torso sails into the Arctic Ocean. Can you imagine? Kitten apart. After filming everything I wanted, I soon arrived to the place and caught Chishan doing a very indecent thing. The Lord of Cold is on the phone when no one is looking. The advanced man indeed. Where, I wonder, did he get that cell phone? Nonsense! Here. Hotel keeper Ivan, who took me here, appeared to be a great cameraman. So I have gorgeous footage next to the Lord of Cold. I also took away his stuff <laughs> for a while. Давно было минус 71. О, это уже давно. Начало прошлого века. Вы так больше не колдовали, да? Да. 
А почему у вас нет в вашей резиденции в Тамторе? Ну, в основном вот основной поток туристов, до гостей сюда едет. Поэтому мне приходится здесь стоять и встречать, как вас. Понятно. А я-то думала, там зайду, на троне сидит, поверите ли холода. Да, у меня там же лет, лет, летом я там переселяюсь. А, -а, а Хранить холод, мировой холод хранить. Там. Прямо в пещере живете? Да. Здорово. Сейчас, пока зима, Ческан вольный как бы. Вот матушке земле очень нужен холод. Без холода никак. Поэтому вот есть такое понятие, да? Вот земли держит холод. Пока есть холод, в мире, во всей планете Земля будет гармония, будет жизнь. Да, вы у нас за это ответственный. Да, не только я, мы все жители планеты. Всем послание да, передает да, повелитель холода. Послание вот такое. Спасибо большое. Пожалуйста. After listening to the heartfelt speech, I couldn't help but take a picture in front of the spectacular inscription of loving Aimikon. By the way, Chis Khan himself wished me luck with this channel. How does he even know what YouTube is? After hugging each other goodbye, we drove back, stumbling upon a herd of Yakut horses, standing awry by the road on the way. Great piece of luck! I really wanted to see them since my arrival in Yakutsk, and here they are, grazing 30 meters away from me. Admittedly, I could go to a local farm and look at horses, cows and deer, but the problem is that each such trip costs many, many hundreds of dollars. The chances of seeing horses on the road to Chishan were 1 to 2. And I got lucky, as I said. Hooray! Except it wasn't that easy. As soon as we got out of the car, they galloped onward. Challenge accepted. We're на охоту за якутскими лошадями. Ой. На видео охоту, разумеется. We jumped into the car and drove after them. And... Мы догнали якутских лошадей. Yeah, they stopped running away. Look at them, how cute they are. They look like fat ponies. In winter they sleep standing up to stay warm. They're digging with their hoof to find food. Digging? That's great. It's not like coming to the farm, it's chasing horses in the woods. I really wanted to pet one of them, and has probably pestered every horse in the band. I wonder if I can come up and pet, or will they run away? All eyes are on me. Uh -oh. Oh, yes. No, they don't seem to want to be stroked. And you... Come here. Let me stroke you. Won't come. Without success. At the time, I didn't know that these horses bite and kick, and without a keeper, it is not recommended to come close to them, not to mention touching their tails and manes. Damn, it's a good thing they didn't bite me off. 
I was very persistent in following them without stretched arms and countless entreaties. I was especially surprised at how they feed, just digging the ground with their hooves looking for the hay bumps under the snow. It's amazing, of course, how hardly these animals are. In winter, they feel comfort at minus 60 and in summer at plus 40. They can endure a temperature difference of 100 degrees Celsius. Funny butts. <laughs> they turned at me like that. <laughs> Funny. Very cold. I took pictures of Yakut horses, however. Cold. Getting in the car right away. Then Ivan took me to the hillside with a gorgeous view of Tamtor. He said that there are especially a lot of bears here, and I started to get worried until I remembered that they hibernated. But in spring and summer, the one who comes here shall be armed in case of not so pleasant meeting. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. But my plans were not only to take pictures of the village from above, since Fly failed to do it, but also do the most important experiment – to shoot a nice salute using boiling water at the pole of cold. It should be very cool and eye-filling. With the view like that, and that sunshine, it should work. However, the matter has ends and outs. The hotel keeper said we should have practiced near the house to make it nice, or at least somehow acceptable. Oops. I only have two tries of water with me, so let's forget about practice. Okay, three, two, one. Chotka. Uh -huh, четко. Wow, I think it's super beautiful. But Ivan said that the water should be sprinkled in a different way. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Mm, I'll have to try harder. So after explanations, I tried again. Uh -huh, снимаю. Wow. Wow. Much cooler than the first time. And while we're on the subject of experiments, I've got something interesting. For starters, I decided to freeze a fork in ramen noodles. I wonder how long it takes for it to freeze. Well, are we freezing the noodles? That's what happened to it. When I froze the water in Yakutsk, it took me about an hour at minus 40. Quite a bit of time. Yeah, it has frozen. What about the fruit? Ой. <laughs> ну, в общем, да. And then I made the newest dish with my signature recipe. Yakutsk style eggs. The broken egg has been outside for about 10 minutes, and here is the after effect. That's about the kind of food we had in our school cafeteria. Well, let's proceed to another experiment. What happens if you pour boiling water on a rag? Let's wait a few seconds. The stream is coming. 
about two minutes have passed and this is what we have. The hotel keeper is going to kill me. Three days in Oimekon rushed by very quickly, but they were eventful and interesting at most. There was just one thing left. I had to drive 1000 kilometers back to my hotel in Yakutsk. And here, oh yes, it's here that the most interesting part of the video begins, because the road back is a deep shit. Also, it was a good start. Not only did I take the front seat, a super comfortable one, I finally had a great opportunity to take good shots on the road. Take a look at these spectacular views. We had the road in the afternoon, and soon the snow began to turn orange and pink. Christmas trees. Can you see the Christmas trees? I had never seen such paper white Christmas trees before. The sun was sinking lower and lower, allowing me to watch a beautiful northern sunset. One would think, well, what could have happened? But as soon as it got dark, the first challenge was not long in coming. I felt from the beginning that it wasn't particularly warm in the car. And the farther we drove, the more I froze. And after a while, I put on all of the clothes that I wore in minus 40 and in minus 50. And now I'm in the car. And then, dear heart, the heater in the car broke on the way back. It's freezing to death. And we just drove away. To be honest, freezing in the car for 15 hours straight was a non-inspiring challenge. So I really, very hoped that the two Yakuts who were traveling with me as passengers would crack the heater and everything would be fine. Парни, ну что, починили? Класс. And behold! After half an hour, everything seemed to be solved. For a short while, however. More on that later. It was disappointing that we drove along the most picturesque part of the route with the huge gorge in complete darkness, just like the first time. The driver said I was lucky, because tourists seeing it for the first time often get scared. Could we take none seeing such a spectacle for luck? So it goes. And then the interesting part began. Halfway through, we had a flat tire. Yes, the only thing I was afraid of going on such a long journey through the harsh north was a car breakdown. Take that. A malfunctioning heater and a punctured tire 100 kilometers to the nearest settlement. So the guys get out and started jacking up the car. Our communication was a big problem, because even though the guys spoke excellent Russian, they communicate with one another in Yakut. In that environment, it wasn't easy to smell the coffee. And when something is broken and it is not clear to the end what the problem is and whether it can be solved, it becomes more than uncomfortable. As a result, an hour later the wheel was changed, but it required air, but there was no compressor in the car. There was nothing to do. We had to wobble all the way to Handega, the nearest settlement. Pretty fast, huh? On the way we met a truck and its driver shared his technical device with us. And the guys started literally disassembling our van. Once they got to the innards, they started the compressor and finally resuscitated the ferris wheel. <laughs> Это 
будет крутая история. Finally, when the car was restored to its former appearance, I thought I could breathe easy. But nothing of the kind. Ну что, доедем с таким или нет? Впереди целая ночь, Дина. А потом целый день, да. We had to find a new spare wheel somewhere, in case we had another tire flat. It was night time. Be exact, 2 a.m. And the search dragged on for another hour. My god, what have I done? We first went to some kind of tire shop, but no one picked up the phone at this hour to run out and patch a flat tire. Then in Handega we waited for someone to bring it. Eventually a car came, but without a wheel. Super. And by the local Yakut tradition, the driver went to placate the spirits with pancakes, which he left for them in the snow. Very promising, isn't it? The day was breaking, and we drove up to Lena. Good news, since Yakutsk is not far from it. Here it is, the city. We made it, unharmed and almost unfrozen. Can you believe it? And the final question is simple. Was it worth it? Hell yeah! The trip to Aimekon was an unforgettable adventure with a good ending. And this is the most important thing. Feel my emotions when I saw the hotel door in front of me. Господи, я дома. My journey through Yakutia is over. Honestly, after this kind of adventure, I'm very happy to be back home. No final words. My video says it all. Так что спасибо за просмотр. И пока. Oh no no wait. That's it for sure. Bye-bye.